Well, it seems like we have some breaking news. The results from the New Hampshire Democratic and Republican primaries are in, and the most predictable outcome is the one we got. And <laughs> the conclusion ultimately is that I, I think that this kind of seals the deal. It's going to be Biden versus Trump in November. So when it comes to the GOP primary, of course, Donald Trump won. And Nikki Haley didn't do too bad, but was it still a landslide for Donald Trump at the time that I record this video? Yeah, I'd say that. Now, look, the votes are still coming in, so it's possible that she makes up some ground. But either way, he's going to win, and then he's going to go on to win state after state after state. And it's going to be Trump. He's going to be the Republican nominee. Now, Nikki Haley has vowed to stay in the race, which I think is smart in the event he gets criminally convicted. I mean, 91 criminal charges four indictments. That's a reason to stay in. But assuming nothing extraordinary happens, he's going to be the Republican Party's nominee. Now, on the Democratic Party side, this is really interesting because, you know, there's a lot of dissatisfaction even among Democrats with Joe Biden. So they really have an opportunity here to choose someone new, especially given the fact that Joe Biden isn't even on the ballot in New Hampshire, which is so bizarre to me because this is the incumbent president and he's not on the ballot so what's happening here so let me explain so the dnc chose to change up the primaries and give south carolina the first primary but new hampshire did not like that because they have a first in the nation primary clause in their constitution to where they always get to go first so they chose to usurp the dnc and move their primary ahead of south carolina's and as a result of that joe biden wasn't on the ballot so he was running a write-in campaign here and he won the write-in campaign. Dean Phillips, he came in second. And Marianne Williamson came in a distant third. This isn't necessarily a result that is surprising. But Democrats, they very clearly are happy with the status quo. They're happy with Joe Biden. And they're not opting for a change candidate. Part of this might just be that they still believe that Joe Biden is more electable than any other candidate. Or they think that maybe if they vote against Joe Biden, that might weaken him against Donald Trump. I'm not necessarily sure. But... At this point in time, Joe Biden has the most votes. He is projected to win, even though the results, you know, uh, they're not over yet. Like, they're still counting, but Joe Biden's going to win this, right? But when it comes to New Hampshire, I think it's very bizarre that they have this clause in their constitution that they always have to go first. It seems really entitled to me. And I say this as somebody who likes New Hampshire because I'm biased. Typically, they tend to vote for the most progressive Democrat in these Democratic Party primaries, with this being the exception since we're dealing with an incumbent. But I like New Hampshire, but it's just kind of weird that they're like, no, 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 we get to go first, okay? Nobody else gets to go before us. Why don't all of us just vote at the same time? Because see, as somebody who lives in Oregon, my primary never takes place until like months after a lot of other people have voted. And oftentimes the candidate who I wanted to vote for in these primaries has already dropped out. Like in 2020, I voted for Bernie Sanders, but he had long dropped out when I casted my vote in Oregon. So how about we all just vote at the same time? That would make a lot more sense to me. And also we wouldn't be prolonging our own suffering by dealing with extended election periods. We could vote and get on with our lives and dread the general election, right? So I, I don't get that. But I mean, Democratic Party voters are loyal to the Democratic Party. And Joe Biden is, uh, he's going to win every other primary going forward. So, you know, it's an inevitability at this point that Biden and Trump are going to face off against each other again, even if a lot of us don't want to see that, even if both of them have very high net unfavorable ratings. But, you know, even if as a leftist, you know, you can see why both of these candidates are not ideal to be extra charitable here. They at least represent their core base. And the Democratic Party is not representative of leftists. They are representative of liberals. And liberals don't have the same goals as leftists and even progressives, arguably. So that's what they're voting for. They're riding or dying with Joe Biden. They're going with genocide Joe. You know, that's how democracy works, unfortunately. It's the status quo and things won't change, but I don't think that they want it to change. So we just keep trying to do our best to um, get liberals to see why progressivism is the way to go when all of this dissatisfaction with the status quo and neoliberalism has led to the rise of fascist demagogues like Donald Trump. But I mean, when it comes to Donald Trump, I think that 
we have to stop pretending as if he also doesn't represent the GOP's base. Sure, you can say that Nikki Haley is taking away a sizable portion of his his uh, his votes, but I mean, the GOP base they love fascism. Let's be honest; that's what they want. They want somebody who is a fascist demagogue, and Trump is the perfect representative of that party. He might be evil and fascistic, but he represents them. You can't say that this is an anomaly by now, right? They voted for him now in multiple elections. That's the guy they're rolling with. So it might be disappointing to people with common sense, but we're getting Trump and Biden, okay? <laughs> and it, it's so disappointing, but also I can't be that disappointed if this was something that was entirely predictable and expected. Unless anything extreme happens, like they both die because they're both over a thousand years old each, you know, they're going to be the nominees. I mean, Trump could be convicted, but still, even if he's convicted, do we really think that the base is going to turn on him? Do we really think that? I'm not going to kid myself. So New Hampshire, in my opinion, kind of sets everything in stone. It's it's kind of, it's going to be Biden and Trump, right? Let's not fool ourselves. It's disappointing. You know, Marianne Williamson didn't run a perfect campaign, in my opinion, but I plan on voting for her if she's still in the race in Oregon, just because I don't want to cast my vote for Joe Biden in a primary when I actually have an alternative. And when it comes to Dean Phillips, I mean, I genuinely don't know why he's running because his policies are indistinguishable from Joe Biden's. He's basically a younger version of Joe Biden. So it's inconceivable to me why you would vote for Dean Phillips over Joe Biden, unless like age is your number one concern, which that is a concern to some people, I would imagine. But Dean Phillips is why I, I like I don't get it. And if you listen to him on policy, there's nothing inspiring about him. The dude's. Look, I'll be uh, I'll be completely frank. I think he's kind of a rube. Um, I don't think that he's very bright. He has no charisma, uh, and his policies are indistinguishable from any liberal centrist politician. So I I just it is weird that he's choosing to run against Biden because you know that type of politician would maybe do well in a Democratic Party primary where there's no incumbent. But because he's running against an incumbent, he pissed off all of the liberals who are loyal to Joe Biden. So it's a really interesting choice. But um, I just, I don't get it. I don't get it right. But that's the results. New Hampshire is, uh, it's over. And now I think we're probably going to see both Joe Biden and Donald Trump in their respective fields just lap everyone else. You know, and now it's a question of, how long will the other candidates stay in the race? And uh, that's yet to be determined. But ultimately, it's going to come down to Biden and Donald Trump. Um, and that's just the unfortunate reality. We don't want to see it. It's a matchup nobody asked for, but we're all getting. So what are you going to do, right? That's American politics where disappointment is to be expected. And if we're pleasantly surprised, then... Uh, Awesome, but don't count on that. It's always going to be the status quo and the most terrible options on the table. So, uh, yeah, onwards we go to the general election. Up yours, up yours, up yours. Sons of bitches, bitches, bitches. Woke moralists, woke moralists, woke moralists. I dreamed I saw my maternal grandmother. She was stroking herself absentmindedly. I let her have her way. The genital region was exposed. I let her have her way.